Accountancy Ireland asked Lorcan O'Connor, head of the Insolvency Service, why it's so important for personal insolvency practitioners to undergo training. Just to, to emphasise or perhaps to explain why the Insolvency Service is looking for these kind of courses to be undertaken by anybody applying for, a, for, for, a, for authorisation. Uh, it goes back to the point that I made earlier that in my mind the, the role of the PIP is so important. As I said, the debtor needs to be confident that they're getting the right advice. The creditor needs to be confident that the PIP isn't trying to, um, you know, try and get a proposal past them uh, that isn't in their interests. Equally, the ISI, the Insolvency Service of Ireland, need to have confidence in the work that the PIP undertakes. We will be relying on a lot of the analysis that they submit to us and the circuit court equally needs to have confidence in the PIP because they too will be relying on certain documentation generated by the personal insolvency practitioner. So all in all, given the various stakeholders and the importance of the role of the personal insolvency practitioner, the ISI has felt it critical to ensure that all that can be done to, to ensure a high quality of service is delivered within the PIP industry that we've, we've gone about setting the, the licensing regime uh, in the way that we have done. And we are not allowing any grandfathering rights and that's for, from, from any angle, be it people who are working in corporate insolvency or indeed people who might be dealing with mm -hmm. debt management at the moment. But equally, we're not saying no to anybody. What we are saying is that you need to demonstrate that you have the knowledge and the expertise in this area. And if you're able to do that and you tick many of the other hurdles that would be typical of any kind of regulatory regime in the financial sector, such as fitness and probity, tax compliance, professional indemnity insurance, et cetera, et cetera, we're not saying no, but you do need to tick all of those boxes. Do you have any sense yet of the number of practitioners that may seek to become authorised? Very difficult to say. Um, if you were, for example, to try and look to the UK and trying to get a bench benchmark from there, it's not that easy because in the UK uh, an insolvency licence basically covers both corporate and personal. So you, you don't necessarily have an easy indicator from there. But in my mind it is likely to run to several, th several hundred, uh, I should say, and if you look at the level of interest that is demonstrated itself at various conferences in recent times that would support that number and equally when I talk to the professional bodies such as chartered accountants and others there seems to be a healthy uh, uptake in terms of the courses that they've uh, they've announced.